So, now we're going to look at a simple example of this, and we're going to again look at the example of rolling a dice. Let's just start then you, by setting out a tree diagram. So here's when we haven't rolled the dice yet at all, we're just at our starting point. We're definitely going to roll the dice, so there's no possibility of us um, not getting an outcome here. So we're going to say there are two possible outcomes, and if we draw two pathways, you can call them like this, then our two possibilities are that we will get a six, or we won't get a six. And we write that not six, like that. Okay, what are the chances of getting a six? Well, one in six. So we write that like this. And now we've got our failure option, which is five out of six, or the complement, you can say, of the other option here. So these are complementary uh, probabilities. And they're, because they're a certainty, they do add up to one. Okay, now, what if we roll the dice a second time? Then we'll have our probability tree branching again, like this, like this, like this, and like this. And again, we'll have the same uh, possible outcome. So we'll have either we'll get a six, or we won't get a six. We'll get a six, or we won't get a six. So there's our probability tree, and if we just fill in the figures again, we've got a one sixth, a five sixth, a one sixth chance here, and a five sixth chance here. So these are our um, probability pathways, if you like, that will take us through to our final outcomes. Now we can use a probability tree diagram like this, uh, and the idea of adding and multiplying to calculate probabilities. So for example, in the well, the example that we had before, we had the probability of rolling six twice, which we said was equivalent to the probability of rolling a six um, and the probability of rolling a six again in the second round. Now, in other words, what we've got here is both a six and another six. We can sometimes see this term both as being a useful indicator as well. So probability of rolling a six and rolling six. So in this case, we haven't got or, we've got an and. We've got to have both a six and another six. Therefore, we say we multiply because it's very unlikely when you're saying and that uh, it works well, less likely your chances are going to diminish uh, and so we multiply our probabilities so we've got probability of rolling a six is one out of six and so multiply another one out of six gives us one out of 36 and we can see that um, that uh, multiplication very clearly on the tree diagram here. So it's when we go down this path here. So with our first roll we get there we go, we get a one in six probability. And we now there's only one other pathway we can go down. We have to now go down this one here. So when we're going across the diagram in this way, from event one to event two we're going to be multiplying our probabilities. One sixth times one sixth. When do we add then our probabilities? Well, when we've got something like this, what about the probability of rolling at least one sixth? Okay? Let's rewrite that and say, well, it's the probability of what? It could be the probability of rolling a six and another six, like this. But it could be, so we say, or it could be the chance of rolling uh, 
a 6. Let's put it now in brackets. And a not 6. Or it could be the probability of rolling a not 6 and a 6. So we can lay it out like that. Now it sounds a bit complicated laying it out like that, but this will help us when we come to deciding whether we're going to use um, a multiplier, so whether we're going to multiply or whether we're going to add. Remember when we've got an and, we're going to multiply here and here. When we've got an or, then we're going to add. So here and here. Okay. So let's use our pathway and see where those possibilities are. So the probability of a 6 and a 6 we've already marked out. So it's this red pathway going up through the diagram like this. Okay. There's another pathway though because if we roll a 6 on the first dice we might also roll a 6. Uh, sorry, we might not roll a 6 on the second dice but we've already rolled a 6 if that makes sense. So that satisfies our criteria. In other words, we've still rolled at least one six. And there's a third option. Okay, let's use the bright red here, which is if we go down here. Now in the first roll, if we don't roll a six to get to here, we've still got a chance of rolling a six on the second roll. So our, our third pathway will go up here to here. We can't go down this pathway because we won't get any sixes at all. So we've now exhausted all the possibilities. So let's uh, work out the probabilities. So first of all, the probability of getting a six on the, ro on the first roll and a six on the second. Let's just rewrite that to make it really clear. Okay, so probability of a six and another six, like that. So that was, uh, well, if we go down the pathway, one in six times, because it's an and, because we need both of these things to be true, another six. So we have one six times one six. So there we go. That's our first option, if you like. Now we've got or, probability of six, and not a six. Well, that would be if we went up here along the green pathway and down here, uh, then we would be multiplying again. But we need to remember to add these two things together. So we would now have one sixth times, this time, five sixths. And then we get our or again. So we add. So we add our third possibility here. We start this time with five sixths going down here but then up here we get one sixth so we must multiply every time we go along the diagram to make this neater let's put parentheses or brackets around the fractions that we're multiplying and then simply work out the answer so our first bracket here, we've got 1 sixth times 1 sixth. So if we multiply across, we've got 1 times 1 is 1. And then 6 times 6 is 36. Then we move to the green pathway. 1 times 5 is 5. 6 times 6, 36. And now we move to the red pathway. 5 times 5, uh, sorry, 5 times 1 is 5 again. And 6 times 6, as usual, is 36. And we can add these together. 1 plus 5 plus 5 gives us 11. And our common denominator is 36. So, fairly straightforward, I think. And these examples can get a lot more complex. But with these simple diagrams, when we've got just one event here, sometimes we put a dotted line to separate out the two events. So that's quite a good idea. We do that. We've got a first event and a second event. We can use a tree diagram to pick out the various possibilities and that gives us an example of when we're going to add those probabilities together. If on the other hand we're tracing our possibilities through the diagram then 
our chances are diminishing we're going to multiply those probabilities together and then if we add them together we get our final answer Finally, let me just sound a note of caution. Um, in this video, we've been looking at independent events. Okay, independent events. Now that's when you get, um, say, the dice roll having no effect, the, the first die, dice roll having no effect on the second dice roll. Okay, so we say A and not A, and on the second dice roll, well, there's no way that, that the roll of the first dice can affect, uh, affect the roll of the second dice, so they're independent events. In that case, the numbers are going to be the same, so we had 1 in 6 and 5 in 6, and then again we repeated those numbers. We said this is a binomial event, because there's just two numbers here that get repeated each time. Okay, two fractions. Now that's not the case with something like a deck of cards, so we need to be a little bit careful. When you've got a deck of cards and you're not replacing the card after the first draw, then the what happens on the in the second event when you draw a card for the second time obviously depends on what happened in the first draw. For example, let's just raise these probabilities. If you, well let's keep with the A's here, let's say that we're trying to draw an ace. Okay, so it's either an ace or it's not an ace on the first draw. In the second draw it's also either going to be an ace or not an ace, an ace or not an ace. But here the probabilities are going to be slightly different. So in the first round we had a one sorry a four in 52 there are four aces in a pack so four out of 52 chances of drawing an ace and therefore we had a 48 so 52 minus 4 is 48 out of 52 chance of not drawing an ace so it's much more likely that we won't draw an ace than it is that we will it would be a mistake though to think to repeat these numbers up here so again to think we had a 4 out of 52 chance of drawing an ace because on the first draw we might indeed have drawn an ace and in that case there are only three opportunities uh, in the second round if we don't replace that ace okay so what's the probability now well the probability must be 4 minus 1, so we've only got 3 chances of drawing an ace, and we've only got 51 cards, so we've got 3 out of 51 probability. Here then, we must have 51 minus 3, so again it's going to be 48, but not out of 52, this time out of 51. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at the other pathway here. So this is when we are, let's put a triangle around this one just to make it clear like that. So this time when we're, um, we haven't drawn an ace on the first draw, now we're going to draw an ace, but we've again only got 51 cards. Okay, so it's out of 51. And this time, because we haven't drawn an ace, it must still be four aces in the pack, so it's going to be four out of 51. Let me just make that a little bit clearer. Okay, four out of 51. And on this pathway here, well again, we didn't draw an ace on the first round, so we're going to say it's still, uh, well, it's, it's, it, let's, let's do the first, the, the out of first. So out of 51, but it's got to be, we've got to subtract 4 now. Remember these split branches here are complements of one another, so they always add up to 1. Add to 1. Okay, let's write that again here. Add to 1. Okay, because there's certainties. So it's got to be uh, 51 minus 4, it's going to be 48 out of 51 again 
on this branch. Uh, no, it isn't, because it's it's going to be 48 out of 51. It's going to be 51 minus 4. I need to make sure I calculate this correctly. It's going to be 47. I do apologise. There we go. 47 out of 51. Let's just check this. 47 add 4 gives us 51. So there's our adding to 1 possibility. Always a good idea to check at the end. And here we should have 48 add 3 adding to 51 as well. And indeed they do. So that we've got 3 51sts added to 48 51sts equals 51 51sts and 4 51sts added to 47 51sts here again give us 51 51sts. So it's a slightly more complicated pattern here um, for non-independent events. So we call these non-independent or sometimes uh, just dependent but I tend to call it non-independent events. And if we've got the second probability, depending on what happened in the first event, then what we have is something called conditional, conditional probability, conditional probability, and probability, yes, I've spelled that correctly, and we'll be looking at conditional probability in another video.